Number two, I, I rise in this very sad occasion, somewhat angry, but forgiving because at my age, I guess, um, and practicing my faith, I've come to a conclusion of being as forgiving as I can to my fellow man. I lived on, I've lived on the border all my life. I was actually fourth generation in that area of the state. My son, fifth generation. Very, very proud. We um, <clears throat> didn't have an opportunity. I was pulled off the bus, Senator uh, Uresti, when I was drafted to the Vietnam War because there was a tremendous shortage of teachers then. So I had to stay back to teach our children. And I took pride and I passed on to them what I had learned growing up. As a matter of fact, at the end of each class, I would take five minutes to lecture them on being a good citizen, being a good, good American, because that's what I was taught at home. My dad would preach patriotism and Americanism. Senator and my mom would pitch in with citizenship. I've made a lot of friends over the years on both sides of the border. <clears throat> I can remember one time when I was in Mexico right across from Browns with Matamoros and all the my friends there were congratulating me for my service as a public official and that I was a great Mexican, a great Mexican, a great Mexican. That's all I heard from him, except one guy at the end of the table. He was eyeing me, and he said, after a little bit of conversation, he says, Lucio's not a Mexican. He said, he's an American. So they all turned to me to see how I would respond, Senator, and I said, he's right. I'm very proud to be an American. I love my country just like you love your country. But I can assure you that as I serve in public office, no matter whether I'm a county treasurer, county commissioner, state representative, or state senator, you can always count on my positions that hopefully will va a afectar ambos lados de la frontera, which means hopefully will impact both sides of the border, in terms of our relationship with you all, because we are hopefully good neighbors. We want to understand and appreciate part of our. You're, we're part of a culture that's extremely, you know, strong in this area of of, of both countries, and we celebrate a lot of important holidays together. I, um, I've had a lot of experiences over my, over my years. I'm a senior now, and I talk to my grandchildren, and I try to teach them to be good neighbors and to, and to be understanding and to never discriminate no matter what, because we're the majority down there. There's 95, 96 kids in our public schools that are Hispanic down there. Ninety-five to ninety-six percent of the kids are Hispanic. And in this state, the majority of those going into public schools are Hispanic. We know that. And we need to educate them so they can become good Texans, good Americans, productive citizens. And we need to send the right messages on whatever public policy we pass on this floor. You know, I have to prove that I'm an American citizen twice a week, Senator Shapiro. I have to go through a checkpoint. And I don't like it. Because their line of questioning is, is just horrible. And I get after them. And I'll, I'm, I'm hoping the cameras are on. Because where are you going? Oh, so I'm, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going to go work. Where? Well, I'm going to Austin. What do you do? I mean, I should just have to prove, Central Williams, that I am an American, period, and they should let me go about my business. They don't even me to look at the person inside the car. 
Anybody else in there? Well, you know, the door's unlocked. Take a look. Line of questioning is horrid. Now, that comes from our federal officials, and I'll restate that any, any time, anywhere, including Washington, and my intentions are to do so whenever I get that opportunity. Somewhere along the line, they're not teaching. <laughs> they're not going to charm school, I say. What, what is going to happen now at other levels of law enforcement with this piece of legislation? Where are we going from here? I, um, I cannot hang my faith outside the door of Senator. Uh, and I can't. It's, it's, it's impossible for me to separate my faith and my duties on this floor. And that means that I have to be very considerate before I vote on a piece of legislation or I know will impact somebody negatively, whether he's a stranger in this land or whether he's a citizen. You know, a lot of the strangers here, all those documented, undocumented workers, they struggle, quite frankly, to get here. I don't condone doing anything illegal, but you've got to understand what's happening on that border. Thousands of people are getting killed every day. Every day I pick up the newspaper and I'm afraid to read my computer because another 172 graves were dug up and two of them were Americans this morning. There are real problems out there without creating more divisiveness, more dissension with legislation such as this. And I will say this, that all of this is going to be reversed someday. They're going to look back and they're going to see what happened here. And the people on this floor will probably, you know, grow in terms of Hispanic members. And they're going to, including the leadership, and all of this is going to be reversed. But I don't want it to be in a hateful mood. And that's what hopefully I will be speaking against. Hate divisiveness. You know, we're one Texas family, regardless of our cultural background. I've always talked about that in our public schools, even down south where I'm from. And I, I just uh, sit, I'm sitting here throughout this whole debate, and I'm thinking back of the experiences that we've had, similar to some of those that were discussed and shared with us here tonight, I remember my son as a college student at Texas Tech being pushed against the wall. Pushed against the wall. I came so close in hurting somebody because they pushed my son against the wall because they wanted to know if he was an American citizen. Can you imagine that? Having your son pushed against the wall to your daughter? Or having your father being questioned to death because he's on his way back from a fishing trip at Boca Chica Beach, right close to where we've lived all our lives, by somebody who just got into town from up north? What about him? After questioning those in the car. Oh, that guy, he's, he's in a, to us, he's an American hero. Sable American veteran, veteran of foreign wars, questioning his citizenship. This is going to make it ugly, very ugly in many communities. Dr. Whitmar kicked it off perfectly tonight. And I've never been so proud in listening to some of you stand up what you believe is right. You're right, Senator Desen. I'll, I'll stop with. I'll stop here. But when we listen, and I listen to our prayer, I'm very attentive. You might laugh at this, but I prayed three rosaries last night. Three. For a reason. Because I love my Texas. 
and everyone that lives here. And I love the people I work with. But we're just, at times, we, f- we don't feel for the, for the person next to us. And I just want you to know that the low- this is really the lowest point of my 24 years of service on this floor.